what we're gonna try to do tonight, I went ahead and taped up the windshield just to help protect it a little bit. We're gonna put the cow hood back on and actually cut the cow um, hood to make it look like it goes around the cow. Actually, instead of just right now, it just overlaps if you refer back to the first video. Um, like a lot of people just kind of, they just slap on the hood um, and don't really put no time into it. So we decided we're gonna go ahead and notch it and make it look closer to factory. So I'm gonna work on that some tonight, trying to get that notched out so that Mike can uh, hopefully work on that hood this week. That way my part's done. And then I'll probably block out the passenger door where the door handle goes from the factory, the mold um, shows it. But if you look at this hood, if you refer back to the first video, we had some spider cracking and stuff like that. You can see in the hood and then we had that damaged edge. So Mike's gonna work on this hopefully this week and be able to get all the fiberglass done. But you can see back here how the hood's just square. So what we need to do is come in here and notch this out right here where the cow's gonna be. That way that will rest on the cow and then we'll do a cool trick with some door edge molding to go around that to protect the, uh, help it not tore the windshield up. Windshield's already scratched all up. Nothing I did just from being on the car. Um, but I went ahead and put some tape on it because being I'm gonna be taking it on and off, on and off, on and off and wiggling around a little test fit. And I don't wanna do no more damage to the customer's windshield, which is also a friend, but he's still a customer. Um, windshield no more than he's already done damage to it. So if he messes up his windshield, then that's on him, you know, or other people taking it on and off or, you know, normal wear and tear that's on him, but I don't want to uh, contribute to it no more than possible. So I'm gonna just leave that tape on there while we have the car in our possession to help um, limit the scratches on the optic armor. I know that stuff's not cheap and I don't want it to be my fault that I put more scratches in it. So let's get at it. So all we're gonna do first so that when you get it on there, you know where that cracks at. So you can easily find it is we're just gonna come right here, line up our tape with the edge of our cow like that and then tape straight across and then you can just tear that tape off right there. And what that's gonna do is just give you a reference line to go off of so that you know basically, basically you know where the cow is located at. The edge of the cow to get you started. And you're gonna cut it long and then trim, but you still need some, some kind of starting point. And then we will probably reference where we want these at. I'll actually get another piece of tape for that. What I'll do on this one is I'll actually use two inch and go off of these factory holes that are in the cow. You have some little holes that are in your cow. And that's, of course, since this is two inch tape, that's gonna give me a two inch spacing. And that way, hopefully it'll be equal on both sides. And I will check this with a tape measure here in a second. But again, these are just reference points to help me see I'm trying to draw out my lines and I actually need to move that one because the holes the holes don't look the same so so I put it on some little holes and I guess these holes have actually been screwed on and not from the factory so make sure you use the factory holes don't make that mistake like that. Now I'm just going to sit it on and start laying it out. All right. Now, as you can see, all I do is lay that out. And remember, you want it big. So your cow should stop right here on this line. Okay. Imaginary line through there. So what I do is I set my tape back and I eyeball down that, I should definitely be on top of my cow. Now, if you wanted to get fancy and try to do some measurements or something, you can, but you should be able to shine a light underneath there and look underneath there and eyeball that. And I know I'm heavy. Um, I know I still should be overlapping the cow a little when I make that cut. And then I can lift this little edge up and look uh, at where it's at and kind of get a better layout and then go from there and get it better. And I might also get inside the engine bay um and get randy to sit the hood on it and i might actually scribe exactly where it's at so this is just where i wanted to start at all right so there's what we got on our first cut and all i did was take the air saw which looks like this you can get it at your harbor freight this one's actually a pain in the butt but being I have a shop and a big air compressor, it works decent and it cuts through that stuff like butter. 
but I used a cutoff wheel to cut these uh, straight on a grinder like that. I'm comfortable with it. Use whatever you're comfortable with because you don't want to mess these up. I can get nice straight lines with that cutoff wheel for the most part. Um, when we're done and I know where my exact cut's going to fall, then I will radius my, uh, my corner really nicely. So that's a rough cut for right now. I don't want to put a radius in it because that's not where it's going to stay. So all I did was just radius it with the saw, but I don't want to actually put my final radius in it yet. So now we're going to put it back on the car and see where we're at. With a tape measure, take your tape, put your piece of tape down so you can mark on it, or if you have a silver sharpie in your, if it's a white hood and you have black sharpie, whatever, put something down or use something and you can see the marks clear as day so you don't get confused and mess up because this is very important. You can always cut more, but you can't add it back, or you, you can add it back if you have a body shop or if you want to pay a body shop uh, or if you know how to do it at your house, but you, um, it's for the average do it yourself or it's easier to keep taking more away than add some back. So all I did was go underneath here and lift it up, put my tape measure to the very edge of that right there, made sure I was on the edge, read what the measurement was right here. So basically, you're going underneath here. You're going underneath there, something like that. And then you're looking down on top of it, seeing what that is, and then you're pulling it out and you're hooking it that side and then transferring your same measurement there. So do it up here and then do it as close as you can get there to see in. You can put a block up here if you wanted to and really pick this thing up, you know, to get clearance. I just went right there. Then take you, this is a ruler and connect your dots, draw your line. Let's start back on a bench, let's cut it. Now this one, when I did this line right here, if you notice I went a little bit more in this way than where technically I went right there. Um, that way I can adjust that line nice and straight with a DA. Also for that line to make it easier to see because that body line i can see that body line everybody can see that body line but uh you kind of want to get it precise all i did was take a block and you, if you had a, you could use a hard block it'd be even better and i just ran it down with some pressure in the edge right there and then that scratches it and kind of shows you you know that that's an equal scribe mark all the way down it and that's up the side of this a little so you want to just go a little bit down right there and that'd be my tape line and that's pretty much the center of that radius um like i said if you use a flat block a hard block that's not a soft block like that rolled then that would work or even if you don't have a block at your house but you got some sandpaper you could use a two by four and put the two by four in there you know just scratch that edge or whatever you got a square and sharp that you know not too sharp but to gouge it but put you a little scratch in there and that will help you find um that line whenever you go to cut that when we're done, we'll be radius in all of these. But let's put that back on the bench and get that cut. All right, so there's what you got. So as you can see, mine's pretty close. So it's definitely not perfect. Um, I don't want it perfect yet, but I am really close. So you see the edge where the sandpaper stops or the sanding stops and this side actually almost goes all the way down in there so we're really close now all we want to do is make sure we're even which i think we are i think we are pretty close to even i mean it looks really good right there so now all we need to do is back this up our gap pretty much um so we probably want to back this up maybe a quarter of an inch we'll probably actually measure this one whatever this measures out to we'll probably match to this uh, let's check our other side Normally on cars, uh, like my car at the house, you'll have like a quarter of an inch. So you can see this one already looks good. So it uh, needs to be trimmed right here so that this, this overlaps a little bit on this fender like this. It actually goes like that, okay? So you can see that that gap, it's hard to see, but it's literally right there in front of my finger now. Uh, we're right on top of that gap. So that's looking good also. So both of these just need to be trimmed back maybe a quarter of an inch. All right, when you measure something like this, like I said, I want a quarter of an inch probably. Let's see what we got right here. So 
we got a quarter of an inch right there. And we're gonna break the tape. You learn this in construction if you do construction work. That means you start at 10 so you can get a precise measurement versus down there. Not only do you got the, the play of this end piece on the tape measure, which uh, if you're in carpentry, you know why that's there. There's no reason for me to go over that right now. Um, but when you're doing precise measurements, break the tape, meaning start your measurement at 10. That's the easiest to read. So 11 would be one inch, 12 inches would be two inches, you know, vice versa. So all I wanna do right now is break the tape at 10 and check my gap. So the other side was a quarter, this side's a quarter. Look at that, boy, that's money. And I pretty much freehand that off eye, but that's what happens when you're in collision work for a living. So quarter of an inch. So we wanna break the tape and on 10 and drop that back a quarter of an inch, which would be three quarters if I'm dropping back and mark that and then cut that. All right, so I've also went and put me another tape down, starting that edge, using this as a straight edge, and then extending it out to here. That gives me the line that I need to finish cutting out. And when you pull a, tape, a piece of tape like this and use it for a straight edge, make sure you're not curving the tape. You wanna hook it on one end and then lift it off the panel, pull it straight through, let it maintain its uh, straight form on its own naturally, and then push it down and that gives you a straight line. You can't like curve it or stick it as you go because then you're gonna lose your straight line. It's the same as if you're from construction, then you know about popping a chalk line, you know, it's the same principle. Um, so we're gonna cut this up to about right here. We're gonna stay out of this just a little bit. Um, and then I will cut it again with a saw and then I'll go in there with a grinder and radius this out, radius this, radi, radius this out. Man, I'm tongue tied tonight. Um, so, and I'm not gonna fit this a hundred times because that's, I'm, I'm pretty confident. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my quarter and I'm gonna go ahead and radius these edges, radius that inside, radius them points back there, um, sand all my edges and everything while it's off and then test fit it one more time because I feel pretty decent about it and it's not gonna hurt anything. If I need to come back a little bit more on the next one, then I can, it's not, it's, uh, I'm not scared of, not scared of that and I just trying to save myself taking it on and off a hundred times. If you're nervous about it, take it on and off a hundred times to get it right. All right, so on this hood, all I did is cut that. And like I said, while it was off, went ahead and radius the corner, just took a DA sandpaper. All I used was 180 grit to get that nice and smooth on your edge. And then also your edge right here where you cut it, you're gonna have a little edge. Like I said, we'll go over this with some uh, rubber door edge protector, but I went ahead and took the DA sander like you've seen in the video at pretty much a 90, um, you know, from your floor. So like this. And then I rough cut that with the uh, body saw and then you uh, take your grinder, the same one I've used a couple other times, and you just radius that corner out nice like that. And that's what makes it a nice clean job. It makes it look like the part was made like that and it doesn't look like somebody took a saw saw to it in their backyard. All right, so we got all that cut. As you can see, that's all cut around the cow. It's trimmed out, everything looks good. Went ahead and you know, just showed you a radius to all the corners so you can see how that looks. The only other thing we could end up doing is actually coming in here and if we wanted to do some trick cut and come way up here and cut this out actually a little higher, that would allow this to sit down a little lower and that'd be more accurate. But I don't think there's really no need in doing that because even down here, like you can see off my of fingernail, this is higher because this is Zeus rail. It's higher, so there's no reason to spend a bunch of time um, trying to get that down. When we do take the Zeus rails off of the front of these um, this fenders, we do plan to try to get the Zeus rails down to help with that height. Whoever originally installed these did a pretty decent job, but they're still just a little um, a little higher than we had any, uh, than we care for them to be. So it turned out pretty good. I said this one's a lot higher and this one has to do with a lot if you go back to my first video on the side rail right here where this is mounted this is actually mounted too high so if you accidentally mount your side rails too high that's going to throw off everything and so now that we've trimmed the hood back now you can see where we can stick a whole finger underneath here so we're going to whenever we take the front end off we'll be uh, dropping this get this side down some and even when there's a zeus fastener in this it still just does not bring that down it still has 
uh, too much pressure on it. And looks like the Zeus rail is actually bent up. If you look at that, the angle. So it looks like the Zeus rail on the inside is actually kicked up. So we'll need to go bend that back down and that will help that sit down some. Mike's gonna go through here this week and take care of all of the spider cracking in the front end. He's got to grind all this out and then um, redo all this to fix this and fix the corners that we talked about on the front end at the headlights. It's a little more uh, too tight for my liking against the lights, but after Mike has his part done and after we correct our gaps through here, then I'll go back and shave a little bit out of this probably to um, put it just so it's not rubbing the lights. Cause anytime anything is rubbing together, especially with fiberglass, all it's gonna do is crack the paint or crack the fiberglass. So the car was hit in this front corner. And what we have is this gap is really tight. That's the reason why this stuff's all chipped off is because they've been rubbing together. And then when you go back up to here, this gap is open. So this is a lot of stuff that you'll actually end up learning in the other videos on all the collision stuff. This side's open, this side up here is tight right here to actually like almost touching. So we were talking about last night, I was talking about clearance in this to give me my half inch reveal through here on both sides. But what's actually happened is um, sometimes just like when working on collision vehicles, if the hood is square, but the front end's cocked over, which is what the situation is when it got heat here, it pushed it over and it's just not perfect. And that's the reason why the hood is uh, per se square and the front end is over. And so that's why it's tight here, tight up there, gap there and gap there. So what we're gonna do is when we also have the front end off is we're gonna work on getting the whole front end pulled over that way. And hopefully that will open us back up without having to um, clear us the hood too much. Cause I don't wanna necessarily make the hood fit the car as much as I wanna make the front end fit the hood. Cause the hood is close to square um, when it is built new. But whatever we end up not being able to get out of that, then we will go through and clearance that to make sure all of that's right. So like, comment, share subscribe it's definitely uh this channel is blowed up over the weekend we've got a lot more stuff and hopefully this hood will help you clearance uh and install your hood on your car